Yeah, it's all right. <laughs> which borough do you live in? Uh, I live in Brooklyn. I work in Queens. Okay, which part of Brooklyn? I live in downtown Brooklyn. Yeah. I grew up downtown Brooklyn. Oh, yeah. uh, Tillery Street. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cabin Plaza. Oh, wow, perfect. Yeah. And I got rid of that library down there. Where do you work in Queens? Courthouse, I'm a lawyer. Okay. That's uh, Queens Boulevard. Yeah, this is there. But uh, I work in Jamaica. Quiet, please. Good evening, and Mr. That's better. Good evening, and welcome to the first meeting of the Charter Revision Commission of the City of New York established pursuant to Local Law 91 of 2018. I am Gail Benjamin, and I am honored to have been appointed by City Council Speaker Corey Johnson to lead this commission as its chair. It is my pleasure to call this meeting to order. Um, I have a few opening remarks, and then we'll get down to business, and we have sent all of you um, packages of what we are going to do today, which is an organizational meeting of the commission so that we can get officially started on the right foot. Um, examining the structure of our government may seem academic on its face, but the balance of power among elected officials and institutions and how they function together ultimately affects every aspect of how we live together as a society. How we govern ourselves matters, not just in the context of big picture history, but in the everyday interactions we as individuals have with our government. And nowhere is that more true than in the case of local government. As weighty as the issues are that our colleagues in Washington and Albany grapple with, it is hard to deny that the government that most directly impacts the everyday lives of New Yorkers is the city itself. From responding to emergencies, to keeping our streets clean, to deciding how every precious acre in our city is put to use, it is city government operating pursuant to the framework prescribed in our charter that performs these vital functions and makes these defining decisions. That is why it is vitally important that we make sure that this framework reflects the times in which we're living. It was Thomas Jefferson who wanted each generation of citizens to have the opportunity to revise the Constitution and make any needed repairs to ensure that the country's foundation, found, foundational document reflected the changing times and provided a well-functioning government. That is what this commission has the opportunity to do with our city's constitution, the charter. Since the five boroughs became one city in 1897, the city charter has served as the city's foundational governing document outlining the duties and powers of elected officials, the functions of each city agency, and the fundamental processes of local government, from budgeting and zoning to the enactment of local laws and rules. The charter we know today really dates to the 1989 Charter Revision Commission, which fundamentally reshaped the function and structure of our government, most notably eliminating the Board of Estimate after the Supreme Court ruled its representational system was unconstitutional. And while that charter has served us well, we have the opportunity now to use our experience over the last 30 years and to see what has worked well, what can be built upon, and what could use some refreshing and updating to help shape the city for the next 30 years. A lot has changed about the world since 1989. The internet and social media have revolutionized the ways we communicate. Climate change has transformed the way we think about what it means to have resilient infrastructure. And our conception of what participation and engagement in democracy has evolved. All these transformations have huge implications for how we govern ourselves. Making sure that our city is best positioned to reflect these changes and to meet the needs of all New Yorkers in an ever-changing world will be the essence of the work of this commission. I want to encourage the members of the commission to begin this process by thinking in visionary terms. If we were advising on the creation of a brand new city of eight and a half million people, how would that government be structured in this ideal world to ensure efficiency and accountability? 
balance local control with centralized planning, and create effective checks and balances without unduly hindering the city's ability to respond to challenges. There are many people, current and former government officials, academic experts, city workers, advocates, and everyday citizens who know very deeply what works well and what doesn't. And we'll be relying upon all of them as we craft our proposals. That is why we want to hear from as many New Yorkers as possible if we are going to succeed. We're under no illusions that this will be easy, but we're committed to a comprehensive, thoughtful, thorough, collaborative, and fair process focused on results and concrete proposals that we feel can make a meaningful impact on how our city functions. We anticipate bringing these proposals before the people of the city for their consideration no later than November of 2019. Finally, I want to point out, as a former city council employee, that this is the first city charter revision commission to be established pursuant to local law and to have representation from all of the city's elected officials. With that historic nature in mind, we enter this process with no conceived or preconceived agenda. No one has told us what topics or proposals we should or should not look at. And in fact, we are mandated to look at the entire charter. I could not be more excited to get started on our important work. I know all of you share that feeling. Um, now I would like to introduce the other members of the commission. I recognize that the, we have received letters issued by the officials duly authorized to make appointments to this commission, appointing the following members of the commission pursuant to Local Law 91 of 2018. I will call out the names of those who have been appointed. If you would like to say a few words, you should feel free. Um, Sal Albanese, who is appointed by the Brooklyn Borough President, Eric Adams. You got to turn on the mic if you want to talk. I forgot. I forgot. You forgot? I, I look forward to working with you. I think the, your, your introductory remarks capture my very feeling that we have a rare opportunity to really look at the city charter and make some wholesale changes and bring the city into the 21st century. So thank you. I look forward to working with you. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Lillian Paoli, Barrios Paoli, appointed by City Council Speaker Corey Johnson. Um, I am equally excited to be part of this group, and I really hope that we can do the best for the city, for the citizens of the city of New York. Thank you, Lillian. Lisette Camillo, appointed by Mayor Bill de Blasio. Thank you, also. I'm very much looking forward to working with all of you uh, to really impact uh, the city. Um, Jim Karras, appointed by Manhattan Borough President Gail Brewer. I, too, am honored to be working with this group, and I agree with everything Gail said in her opening statement. Um, Eduardo Cordero, Sr., appointed by Queensborough President Melinda Katz. Um, I also look forward to working with this group and am honored to be here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Honorable Stephen Fiella, appointed by Staten Island Borough President Jimmy Otto. Thank you, Madam Chair. I just want to start by saying I feel very good about uh, this commission from the get-go because of the selection of the chair. I've known you for a long time and there are very few people in the city of New York or across the nation who could really fill this role. <clears throat> knows, you know, you talk about someone who knows how to get under the hood, knows everything about city government. Um, so I'm thrilled to be under your leadership. It's been 29 years since the voters really made any substantial change to the charter. We've had, we've tweaked it over that period of time, but 29 years ago, uh, the people of the city of New York elected to adopt the charter that we have now, and it's remained largely intact. The precipitating event for those charter changes was a Supreme Court decision. We don't have such a precipitating event, but I think we do have an earnest desire on the part of nine principles to really take this charter, look at it earnestly, and try and shape it in such a way so that in the 21st century we're meeting the needs of a very diverse and different city than it was 29 years ago. So I'm grateful to be part of uh, the Benjamin Commission. Thank you so much, Stephen. Paula Gavin, appointed by Mayor Bill de Blasio. 
I too am honored and delighted and proud to be a part of this and thinking about our 8.6 million New Yorkers and what works in our charter, what does not work in our charter, and how we can achieve the city's goals for all New Yorkers. So thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Allison Hirsch, appointed by City Controller Scott Stringer. Um, I just want to echo what others said. It's an honor to be here with all of you to make sure that the city of New York works for all of the people that call it home and is as functional as possible. Thank you, Allison. Uh, Reverend Clinton Miller. Thank you, Madam Chair. It's good to be here to serve underneath your leadership. I don't know about underneath, but thank you. We're all equals here. Satish Nuri, who is appointed by public advocate Tish James. I need the mic, I'm sorry. Uh, it's an honor to be here, and I look forward to working with all of you, and I echo all of the sentiments so far expressed. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Meryl Tish, appointed by Speaker Corey Johnson. A smart lady once said to me, when everyone has spoken so well and said just the perfect things, the smart thing to do is say ditto. So I say ditto. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Jimmy Baca, appointed by Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz, Jr. Well, after a smart lady just says ditto, I think the smart man better say the same thing. Uh, but I will say more. Uh, <laughs> don't forget, I was in the council for 12 years. So <laughs> when, you, when you get the mic and you're in the council, you don't give up the microphone too easy. Um, I, I come here with an open mind. Uh, I, I appreciate what Steve Fayella said, namely that the last time we looked at the charter, we were under court order to eliminate the Board of Estimate and as someone who testified before that agency many times, it wasn't exactly known for its transparency or responsiveness. And getting rid of the Board of Estimate by court order made us have a city council that is a, it, it's a new day. It, it is the contemporary city council that we have now. So our work, I think, is important. We can do constructive things, we can move ahead, and I hope to bring my experience as a community board district manager and as a council person for 12 years uh, to bear and to work with my colleagues and uh, to make the changes that, that need to be made to make our city even better uh, in the years ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. And last but not least, oh, maybe we're finished. <laughs> Carl Weisbrod, who is appointed by the mayor. Um, thank you, Chair. Um, I've served this city for almost half a century and I have a deep commitment to it and hope that I always want to see it function as best it can and I've had the honor and pleasure of working with the chair in a variety of capacities over much of that time and have a great deal of respect for her and um, I really welcome the opportunity to serve with her again, but um, even though I have enormous respect for her, she's not perfect because she missed Left my colleague on my right. <laughs> but she was so important, I put her in a separate category. I knew there was an explanation. Thank you, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And um, in the special category for only special people whose skills and talents and viewpoint bring more to bear than most of us can on the issues in front of us. I bring you Lindsey Green, who is appointed by the mayor. Lindsey. Thank you, Chair Benjamin. That was uh, probably uh, the most exciting intro I've ever received. Uh, <laughs> this is a rare and important opportunity. I'm uh, thrilled to serve and uh, looking forward to working with all of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, that concludes the introduction of the members, and I would like to say um, that I really appreciate all of you for being part of this commission and for participating and for giving us your best thoughts and abilities so that we arrive at a place that will be good for New Yorkers now and in the future. Um, I also recognize that all of the aforementioned commission members are present and that we have a quorum. So we can do our official business. 
Uh, congratulations to each of you. I'm excited to begin our work together on this endeavor and know that the knowledge, strengths, and talents that we each bring to the commission will serve the best interests of the work of the commission and ultimately of the citizens of New York. I do not know all of you personally, but I am looking forward to getting to know each of you as we move forward each of you should have received copies of the proposed bylaws and policies of the commission, and additional copies are available if you haven't been able to open your web page or your email account at the Charter Commission. Has, has, is there anyone who would like another copy? No? Okay. Um, I would also note that while we are not proposing the adoption of any specific policies regarding conflicts, all of the members of the commission are subject to the city's conflict of interest law. If you have questions regarding the applicability of those laws or any of the proposed rules or policies to specific circumstances, you may direct your queries to the commission staff, who I will be introducing later, or to the conflict of interest board at any time. If you have any questions before we move to adopt these matters, now, which is the policies and procedures, including the bylaws, now would be a good time to ask them. Any questions? Okay. If there are no questions, I will now entertain a motion to adopt these bylaws and policies. I move to adopt the bylaws and policies. I move to adopt the bylaws and policies. Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The motion carries. Our first act of official business. Next, I will entertain a motion that the commission appoint Jeff Metzler as executive director of the commission and delegate to him authority to conduct the day-to-day -day business of the commission, including the ability to appoint other staff members as may be necessary to assist us in our work to establish policies and procedures for staff members necessary to ensure the professional and orderly conduct of staff work, as well as the ability to accept any and all services, facilities, or funds on behalf of the commission in accordance with section 36 of the New York State Municipal Home Rule Law. Um, Jeff is fabulous, as those of you who have read the materials will see that he has gathered a great staff and they have done incredible work to prepare for this meeting and I urge all of you and I will be introducing the staff later to make sure that you get to know them because I think they will be helping us in our tasks in a way that is essential and if Jeff if you would just stand up so everybody gets to know who you are I introduce Jeff Metzler to all of you um, I now is there a motion to approve Jeff Metzler as the executive director? I, I, so, move, I so move, Madam Chair. Second? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you all. As I mentioned earlier, I very much look forward to the comprehensive process on which we embark today. We want to engage the public in the process to which we are committed, and to do that, we want to receive input from as many people and organizations as possible in order to best inform our deliberations. We will be conducting a series of public hearings and public meetings throughout the five boroughs to gather suggestions and ideas. We have also set up a website, charter2019.nyc, for those of you who would like to look at it, it is active where New Yorkers can submit ideas directly to us. We also encourage everyone to follow us on Twitter, where we have, where we are, at Charter2019NYC. Uh, as of an hour and a half ago, we had 89 followers, which is exciting, and I urge all of you to follow yourselves on Twitter. The more, the merrier. Um, our staff is committing to finding ways to attract the public to our work and engage with them on an ongoing basis. I hope that after examination of these ideas, the Commission will work to develop a concrete set of proposals which we then anticipate would be the subject of additional public review and additional input. Finally, the proposals that are developed and approved by this Commission will be presented 
by referendum to the people of the city for their approval. I look forward to working with all of you to complete the important mission. I encourage all of you to stick around after the meeting to meet Jeff and some of the other staff who helped us prepare for today's meeting. Did I skip that? Oh, I I'm told I skipped a whole section. Sorry. Uh, that's why we have really great staff, so they're here to tell us when we've screwed up. Um, finally, I will entertain a motion that the commission authorize the staff to comply with the public notice provisions of state law by posting notices of the commission's public meetings in City Hall. So we, will, oh, sorry. we will also post notices of our meetings on our website, Charter 2019 NYC, in the city record, and on social media. Um, so second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, back to... Uh, with the business of the meeting complete, but for one item, I would like to introduce the staff who we have on board, so all of you will know who they are. And if the staff could just stand up when I call your name. Um, Ed Atkins. Uh, Lewis Brown. Malika Jabali. She's over there. Janita John. Jonathan Maserano, Ann McCoy, Jeff Metzler, who you've previously met, Indiana Porta, David Seitzer, Ali Swaytek, and Joanne Wasserman. That is the staff that we have on board. There will be some additions, obviously, but uh, presently, we are located on the 14th floor at 250 Broadway. We are expecting to move to the 26th floor of 250 Broadway, where I expect there will be uh, space for the commission members to have an area and phones and access to computers, but uh, that has not yet occurred. Um, with the business of this meeting complete, I will now entertain a motion that this meeting be adjourned. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you all very much. Um, uh, one quick thing. I hope all of you um, have given us the information about where you would like other commissioners to get in touch with you if they wish to. Uh, we will not be giving that out to anyone except the commissioners. Yes, oh, we haven't passed it out, so is there, if everyone would just sign that and where they would like us to be in touch with them. Um, you can get your mail on the Charter Revision website if you want to.
Um, who already? Uh, I'm, 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 I'